out set. And Kurzadlowski kicks us off for the start of the second half. It's a short kick that goes to the 25, fielded on a bounce and caught by Calhoun. He's tripped up right there at the 25, and the helmet of the tackler comes off. Grant Byrne on the tackle. Yeah, I really like the fact that the Spartans are going with Lynch in the return game because nine times out of ten, good kick returners make good receivers, and good receivers can also make good kick returners. So try to get a guy with some talent in there who can make a couple of guys miss. But again, uh, UC, University of Chicago, electing not to kick it to the talented returners of Case. And kick it on a, on a bounce, too, so that they can get the coverage there quickly. Miles Anthony in the backfield. He'll go to the right hip of Kuda. Three wide set. Kuda is going to take it himself. Up the middle. Gets to the 30. Bounces out. Gets a block. He's to the 40. And run out of bounds near sideline. The tackle made by Guy Stockwell. It's a first down and a gain of 15 yards. You know, I wonder if in a previous life if Kuda may have been a running back. I mean, he's really that good. I mean, he's just so hard to tackle. He's not a big, powerful guy, but he's just very elusive and makes a lot of guys miss. Doesn't have to disguise it either when he's running. There's no options. He's just taking it up the gut. Three to the right, one to the left. Anthony in the backfield. Kuda looks right, now tucks it under at the 40. Bounces out to the 45. Across midfield, inside Chicago territory. Finally tackled. Another first down run for Kuda. Wrapped up at the Chicago 43-yard line. Tackle again made by Stockwell. I mean, Andrew, just try to put this into perspective. 11 carries, 90 yards in the first half for your quarterback. That is as good as it gets from production. Up the middle to Anthony. Anthony wrapped up after a gain of about seven. He's out to the 34-yard line. By the way, that run before by Kuda, 17 yards. Now the ball spotted on the... 33-yard line, Kuda will take the snap, run it himself, flag on the play, he bounces it off tackle right, and down near the sticks at the 21, but laundry on the field in the backfield. You know, in terms of penalties, we pretty consistently had a flag thrown here or there. This might be going against Case as well on the run from Kuda. Dante Capiccioni, the senior right guard out of Birmingham, Michigan, flagged for the hold. So that'll push the Spartans back after three straight first down runs. So now they're back to the Chicago 42 yard line. Four wide set, two to the left, two to the right. Anthony, the receiver in the backfield. Motions to the left. Fan and Spitali on the far side of your screen. Tullock and Lynch on the near side. They dump it off left side to Tullock. Now across the middle, he's tripped up after a short gain. Tackle made at the 36-yard line. The trip up coming from Tim Veselek. You just love how all of the blocking from the linemen who get out in the flat and the receivers, how it just all kind of falls into place. I mean, there's still a long way to go before the first down, but it's important that you get a solid chunk of yardage on each play. Second and 15 to go from the 37. Sticks are at the 23. Kuda on the shotgun snap. Three to the left, one to the right. Looks up the middle, runs up the middle to the 30, and he's down at the 30. Another short gain. Seven yards on the play. It'll bring up third down. And you brought up an excellent point earlier, Andrew. He just does not have to disguise that at all. I mean, he's going to run the ball down the throat of the defense. The defense knows it. And still, most of the time, there's not a whole lot that they can do to slow this young man down. I mean, that is one confident quarterback right there. Third down and eight to go. Four wide. Near side, it's Tullock and Fan. Spitali and Lynch on the right. Man in the backfield is Anthony again. He's gotten the bulk of the carries. Shotgun for Kuda. Drops back, looking over the middle. Dumps it short to Lynch. Across the middle. He's near a first down, and he's got it. Out to the 15 before he's pushed out of bounds. Tackle made on the play by Jackson Gary, who's been all over the field. But a first down pass again. Kuda to Lynch. Well, and this is also pretty obvious that Lynch is the number one go-to receiver for Rob Kuda, I mean, he's been catching balls all afternoon long, and, and Lynch, you know, once he gets his hands on the ball, he's going to pick up something afterwards. 16-yard reception to the Chicago 14. 
from the left hash mark, Kuda, Anthony in the backfield, Tullock, Fan, and Lynch to the left, Spitali to the right. Snap by Kuda, fakes the handoff, dumps it off on the screen to Tullock. Tullock at the 10, tripped up at about the seven yard line. Tackle made on the play by Jonathan Doby. It'll be second down. You know, as the Spartans get into their red zone offense here, there really is no difference between the way that they operate offensively inside the 20 yard line as opposed to outside of the 20 yard lines. They still love to spread things out and keep the defense on their heels. Six yard gain, ball on the eight yard line, second down and four to go. Four wide set, again the same three to the left, Spitali the lone one out to the right. They'll hand it off to Anthony, off right tackle, plunges ahead, and he's inside the five yard line, close to a first down. It is a first down for the Spartans. Out to the four yard line, spotted at the three yard line. First down pickup, first and goal. Miles Anthony also going to come off of the field. Spartans electing to go with their depth and going with Aaron Aguilar in the backfield. So the fullback in for the red zone carries. We've seen that before today. They'll go with a plunge to the right by the quarterback, Kuda. He gets to the one. Off the right tackle, he's finally taken down. It'll be second down and goal from the one for Kuda. You know, I think Chicago is probably thinking that they've seen enough of Rob Kuda running wild on them, so they uh, had the game plan right there to go wherever Rob Kuda goes, and they were able to stop him, forcing uh, the Spartans to take another shot at it here. Aguilar comes out. They'll split, spread it with a five-wide set and an empty backfield from the one-yard line. Second and goal to go from the one. Ten minutes left in the third quarter. 28-17 case. Kuda takes the snap, fakes the screen, now runs ahead, and he's in there for a Spartan touchdown. Kuda with his second rushing TD of the afternoon. And it's 34-17 Spartans. Well, it wasn't too big of a reaction from the Spartan offensive line after that play, but, I mean, they're pretty tired because of this long drive and they're just glad and satisfied that they were able to cap it off right there. Kuda's second rushing touchdown of the day and he is going to lead this team in so many offensive quarter, uh, offensive categories uh, just carrying this team. Carney all again on the kick. It is good and it is 35 to 17 Case Western Reserve University. With 9.51 left to play in quarter number three, the Spartans still in front and Kuda with another touchdown. Everyone loves a comeback, right? Especially when that comeback is Queso Diablo from Qdoba, full of spicy satisfaction to take you straight to Queso Bliss. That fiery, smoky sensation you've been craving has returned. Celebrate the comeback of Queso Diablo. Available now and for an infinite time. Only at Qdoba Mexican Grill. Spartans with a 35 to 17 lead over Chicago. Rob Kuda does it again. His second rushing touchdown of the day. He's got two in the air as well. And it's 35 to 17 Spartans over the Maroons with 9.51 left to play in the third quarter. There's an excellent look at the second touchdown on the ground of the day by Kuda. He is just a scoring machine. And, and Andrew, the other thing about Kuda last year was that he fit into this offense so perfectly, so quickly. I mean, you would not have known that last year was his, his first year at the helm of the Spartans offense. And now he looks like he's been doing it for 10 years or longer. Jackson Colder up to kick. It is in the direction of Jeremy Vincent who will field it at the five. Vincent from the right hash goes out to the left, now bumps it out to the left sideline. Well, tons of flags on the play as Vincent runs out of bounds around the 35 yard line. At the Maroons 35, there are flags on the Chicago 40 and inside the 30 and they'll try to sort this laundry out. And a little bit of extracurricular activity going one-on-one -on -one between the Maroons and the Spartans. I got a number for Case Western Reserve, Alec Levesque, number 11. I did not get a number on Chicago. Chicago. 
tough to hear with the mic breaking up, but Grace Sutton for Chicago gets flagged on that play. Number 31, the freshman DB, part of the special teams unit. So he is going to get flagged, and it'll push the ball back to the Maroons' 15-yard line. It's a good shot of the uh, planes flying by at the air show downtown, and I think for the Spartans offense, getting a little bit of mo extra motivation there from those jets flying around, going faster than the speed of sound. Moser on the first play from scrimmage from the 15, dumps it up the middle to Sid Reynolds. Reynolds out to the 16. It'll be second down. Ball on the 18 yard line. It's where they'll spot it, second and seven. The snap from Moser, looks into the flat left to Ringer. Ringer out to the 22 yard line. Make it third down and about three to go. 35-17, Case in front. Third down and short from inside Chicago territory for the Maroons. They'll make it third and two from the 23 on the pass to Ringer. Moser. Drops back, looks middle, gets his man over the middle for a first down. Another target in this ball game for Andrew Falk. A lot more than we expected based on the two deep we were given by Chris Wilkerson, but Falk being mixed in a lot in the pass game and Moser throwing to him a lot. There's a first down. It's going to go on the 28-yard line. Now they'll run it off tackle right. Chandler Carroll tucking it under. Short gain, and it'll be second down. And Andrew, as this game has progressed, the Maroons have gotten a lot better in third down situations. They're now over 50% converting on those third down situations. And, and I think if you're the Spartans defense, you really want to respond to that and get Rob Kuda and your offense back on the field. Second down, eight to go, throw in the flat. It is out of the reach of Carroll. So an incomplete pass from Burke Moser behind the intended target, Carroll in the flat, it'll bring up third down. And fairly close, Andrew, to a backwards pass, I and mean, you really gotta watch that if you're into the Maroons. You cannot give the Spartans extra opportunities in the turnover department, but I don't think we've seen any turnovers by either team here this afternoon. You saw Moser pointing, he was saying that pass was parallel, not a backward pass, that was his contention. He drops back, looks deep right, but a complete miscommunication. He was looking for Nepa. Nepa cut across the middle, and the pass was to the right sideline. Not on the same page there, and it falls incomplete for fourth down and a Chicago punt. And that's going to happen from time to time with a young wide receiver core. You know, you're thinking he's going to go one way, and he instead goes the complete opposite direction, but... I mean, that's just a growing pain, and it's going to happen here or there with the Maroon receiving core, but they have gotten a lot better through the course of camp. Yeah, Nepa, freshman, this is his first week of college football. Punt goes to Fan, and Fan is immediately dropped at the Spartan 43-yard line. The tackle on the play by John Gormley. So it'll be Spartans football after the punt from the 30 out to the case 45-yard line is where they'll spot it. And so Kuda will take over the offense again. You can hear the air show now. Overhead. Coming around for another lap. So Kuda to start the offense from the case 45. 7.43 left to go in the third quarter. Case up, 35-17. Kuda looking left, gets his man at midfield, and it's going to be about a five-yard gain there, about six yards out to the 46. Ryan Coolidge, a freshman quarterback who's been made into a wide receiver. We were told he was going to get a couple of throws here, and now he's part of a four-wide receiver set. Coolidge split out to the right now. Ball spotted at the... 49-yard line in Chicago territory. Six-yard gain. Kuda from the shotgun snap. 
Drops back, takes it up the middle, and he will get a gain of maybe one to the 48. They'll check Coolidge out now. Into the ball game, Jeffrey Brown Jr. will be in the backfield, along with Aguilar. So Aguilar and Cuda. Three wide set. Cuda motions the running back to the right. Now he'll hand it off left to Brown. Brown gonna lose the football out of bounds. He got dumped for a loss anyway. In on the tackle was the cornerback Bryson Merriweather. That'll bring up fourth down. Well, I think that Miles Anthony won the starting running back job, deservedly so, in camp. But the Spartans are going to rotate a lot of different running backs in there and important to get contributions from everybody at that position. So Peterson to punt to Jeremy Vincent. Here is the punt from Peterson. High punt and contact in the backfield. The punt's going to go into the end zone, but a penalty flag for roughing the kicker on Stephen McGugan, the senior, and you don't expect that mistake from the senior. McGugan, it looked like he could have stopped, and he just plowed right through the punter, Peterson. And I'll tell you what, Peterson just gave him a nice little friendly slap on the side saying, hey, that's okay, nothing personal. And I'll definitely take the penalty in the first down, of course. <laughs> Let's wait for the call. Greg Debelak talking to the referee, Janice Worklin. Could that be running into the punter? Yeah, there is As a difference. To there, is, there is a difference between roughing the, the kicker and running into the kicker. It's running into, and that's a huge difference. So they'll just move it up a little shorter. But it will still be Chicago ball. So the difference being, if it was roughing, it would be an automatic first down. Mm -hmm. But running into, I mean, Chicago still has the football. They'll place it at the 20. So it's five yards tacked onto the back of the punt, as opposed to a touchback to the 25. It'll go back to the 20. I'm guessing that's what Coach Debelak was asking for, probably an explanation on what was the call, because the yeah. specifics, as we mentioned, they're really important on that last play. So Chicago ball, 35-17, K, 6.02 left in the third quarter. UC has the ball on their own 20. Hand off from Moser to Chandler. Chandler Carroll up the middle, back to the line of scrimmage, no more. Now they'll check Ringer out. Ringer's been the fullback, so they'll go with a one-back set and four wide for Chicago. No gain, second down and 10 from their own 20. Case leading 35-17 in the third. Moser going to pass left, wide open, catch made for a first down out to the 30-yard line. The reception by Chris Carabanos, the junior from California. And Burke Moser knew that this was a zone defense because there was not one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, and the zone defense can be easy to pick apart if you can find your man in the open field. Two in the backfield now, Ringer out to the right. Moser looking out right, rolling right, looking for Ringer down the right sideline. Had the matchup he wanted, but overthrew. He wanted Ringer out of the backfield there, got the linebacker mismatch, trying to get it up and over the case lineman, Cameron Brown, who actually came across. So Brown, the lineman who's athletic, picked up Ringer out of the flat. And a big mismatch missed by Moser to make it a second down and 10 from the 32. He'll dump it off left here. Great pass caught, but for not much gain. Out to the 37-yard line. Chandler Carroll on a five-yard reception. You know, Andrew, on the previous play, I, I thought that was pretty darn good coverage by the sophomore Cameron Brown. I mean, that's not a common situation that he's been no. thrown into, but, I mean, he really held his own deep down the sideline. And a good job to pick that up, too. I'm sure that was a halftime adjustment of all those passes in the flat. Throw over the middle, the oh. catch made, but the stick made as well. Cody Calhoun coming across the middle and lays into Andrew Falk. Still good for a first down. 
out to the 45-yard line, but what a tackle by Calhoun. Wow, I, you're not going to get hit harder than that. I mean, Cody Calhoun is an emotional player delivering a big hit. We could, we could hear that all the way up here through her headset. That was loud. The junior captain on the tackle. There's the pass out left inside Kay's territory to Chris Caramanos out to the 46-yard line. Second down and about three to go. Dropping back Moser, looking over the middle, in and out of the hands of Reynolds. Would have been a sure first down. He was a step from the sticks, and the wideout drops it. Reynolds, the number one wide receiver on this team, coming across the middle with nobody near him, in and out of his hands. I, I think he was probably thinking too far ahead into the play. I think he just took his eyes off the ball and was thinking, what am I going to do after the catch? Probably a little brain freeze right there. Hand off Carroll, off the left guard, short of the first down. On third down, they run it with Carroll. It's near the sticks, depends on the spot, looked short to me. I'd say it's out to the 45-yard line. The sticks are at the 44, and it is to the 45. So they'll be a yard short, and they're going to stick with it and go and try to convert on fourth down. 41% last year, the Maroons converting on fourth. Third, 3.31 left to play in the third quarter and a timeout on the play. going to be a timeout by Case. They're going to try to get the right personnel on the field. Case leading 35, 30, 35 to 17, fourth and one from the Case 45 for Chicago. Back after this. Inspired by the 60s, Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. Visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. Case 35, Chicago 17, fourth and one for the Maroons on the Case 45 here in the third quarter. They're going to go for it. Moser from the shotgun snap, hands off to Carroll, close to the sticks. Did he get it? Case says no. They think it's a turnover on downs. And it is. The Spartans stuffed Chandler Carroll a dog pile, and out of the bottom comes Cameron Brown. He was a big part of that stuff. Yeah, and the Spartans were wise right there. They really stockpiled the defensive line with some big bodies right there just to get a little bit of an extra push. So that gets their defense off of the field, gets Rob Kuda back into the game. More opportunities for some offense for the Spartans, but how about Case's defense coming up with a big stop versus the first turnover for either team? Brown and Ian Henderson on that stop at the 45, a yard short, and Case takes over with 3.26 to go from their own 45. In the third quarter, they lead 35-17. Cuda after the turnover on downs, fakes the handoff to Aguilar, deep down the right sideline, caught down the sideline inside the 10 by Peterson. He's run out of bounds inside the five, and Case quickly as first and goal. That's an excellent play fake by Kuda. He disguises the fact that he still has the ball and just puts it right on his man with a very accurate soft touch right there. I mean, Kuda really knows when to put the soft touch on the football. Gets you a really nice first and goal opportunity. First and goal from the two-yard line. Kuda takes the snap, hands off Aguilar, bounces off a tackle, touchdown. Forty-one seventeen Spartans. Aaron Aguilar is first touchdown of the year. And Aaron Aguilar must have had his steak and eggs this morning. He just got a little bit more muscle than his defender that time. It was just enough to spring him loose for the extra six points. And the Spartans continuing to pound it down on the ground. The third rushing touchdown of the afternoon. They've been very effective there. Two-yard touchdown by Aguilar. Low snap. Good hold. A really nice job on that hold 
by Joey Spitali to right the ship. And punching it through is Carniol. So that makes it 42-17. Spartans up big under three to play in the third quarter. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular spectacular accommodations. A 53-yard toss to set up a two-yard touchdown run by Aaron Aguilar. His first touchdown of the year, didn't have any last year, but he plunges off a tackler and into pay dirt for the Spartans. 42-17, Case in the lead. 2.54 left to go in the third quarter at DeSanto Field. And what a year a difference makes. I mean, uh, last year at this point, you know, we were talking about our very competitive game, and now it's just been all Spartans with that 25-point upper hand. Sid Reynolds receives the kick from Colder up at the one-yard line. He's going up the middle and stopped eventually at the 23-yard line or so. Like Calhoun, part of the tackle. I don't think there's really any Chicago player that wants to see Cody Calhoun make another tackle. No, after that, not after, not that after what hit. he did to Andrew Falk over the middle <laughs> last series. Part of a turnover on downs. He punished Falk on a pass over the middle. So now Moser to start over, four wide set, three tight to the right. Out of that scrum, he'll dump it off to the right to. Jeremy Vincent out to the 26-yard line. Beg your pardon, that's not Vincent. That'll be Chris Mason. So Mason with the reception, second down. Started on the 22-yard line. The drop back and a handoff to Carroll up the middle. And he gets ahead to about the 34-yard line near the first down marker. And it will be a first down. Spartans switching things up a little bit defensively, subbing out a linebacker for an extra defensive back. That's the 3-3-5 defense. Normally a very effective way to go for Case Western Reserve, but not on that play. First down. Moser, another screen pass off to the left. It's caught to the first down marker and a first down. Calhoun able to run the receiver out of bounds on the left sideline. Catch made there by Zach Addy, it looked like. I beg your pardon, that's Troy Reed on the far sideline. First down from the 45-yard line, Chicago's own territory. They dump it over the middle to Carroll. Carroll evades a tackler. He's across midfield near another first down, and it will be a first down for Chicago. 10-yard gain. From the 45 of Chicago to the 45 of the Spartans. I tell you what, after their first three drives, Chicago's offense has looked a lot better, a lot more organized. They're staying on the field. They're getting their running backs involved in the passing game, and they are having long, sustained drives here, staying on the field. That's what they want. Four wide. They'll split Ringer out to the right. Drop back Moser, flushed out right, throws right to Ringer, and it's behind the intended target. Part of the coverage there, Channon Demery, the linebacker, will bring up second down. And I tell you what, the throws really starting to add up for Burke Moser, approaching the neighborhood of 40 passes in the game, and we still have about a quarter to go. I mean, his arm is really getting a workout here with under a minute and a half to go. Forty-two seventeen Case, Chicago ball on the Case 45. Dropping back, Moser dumps it over the middle to Ringer. Ringer trips up right at the line of scrimmage. Nobody around and a little frustrated with himself. It'll bring up third down and 10 from the 45. I think he just threw off of the wrong foot right there, but he still finds the completion right there, but just not able to do what he wanted with that ball right after the catch. He had the blocking to set it up. 
Dropping back is Moser. Moser flushed out right. Good pressure. The throw is low and incomplete. Pressure by Nick Kwan from the cornerback position sets up third down. And the Spartans defensive coordinators will not hesitate at all to blitz Nick Kwan. And a late penalty coming in on the play. Not a good reaction from the Spartan crowd. That's usually a good indicator of how it's going to go. Greg Debelak not happy either. Talking to the referee, Janice Worklin. I just Unsportsmanlike. Can't. Not a good time for a penalty. 42-17 case. 50 seconds left to play in the third quarter. And that will move the sticks up for an automatic first. Up to the 29-yard line. Yeah, pretty pretty poor timing right there. What would have forced a fourth down, and Chicago is going to stay on the field offensively even longer as we get a look at the replay. Quan on the blitz. Penalty must have happened after the shot because I can't see anything you know that stands out right here that would be unsportsmanlike. So the snap from Moser. Moser looking right. He's flushed out again, dumps it off to Reynolds and Calhoun again. My goodness. Gonna get another good look at it. Wow. And this guy is some kind of a physical player. Quick toss on the dump to Reynolds, turns around and stuck by Calhoun, and Reynolds is shaken up, understandably so. Tackle made at the 27-yard line, second down and eight, a gain of two on the play. Reynolds gonna be taken off the field after that hit from Calhoun, who has now delivered blows to Reynolds and Falk today, wow. He's not making any friends on the receiving core Most of Chicago. Most certainly is not. Not here to make friends. Well, that, that's, that's also <laughs> true. I mean, that, that's the point. That's, that's the point that Cody Calhoun's trying to get across. So Moser is going to take the snap and hand off to Carroll. Carroll up ahead to the 21-yard line near a first down. Getting in on the tackle, Patrick Crossy from safety. It'll be third down and short from the 21. Boy, this is one long drive for Chicago. Defense of the Spartans been on there. 10 seconds left in the quarter. Moser trying to keep it himself, and he's dropped in the backfield. A loss of four yards to the 25, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, and finally, the Spartans able to force a fourth down with no penalties on the field. As we move to the fourth quarter, Chicago has some decisions to make. End of the third, 42-17, Case leads the Maroons. Back after this. Everyone loves a comeback, right? Especially when that comeback is Queso Diablo from Qdoba. Full of spicy satisfaction to take you straight to Queso Bliss. That fiery, smoky sensation you've been craving has returned. Celebrate the comeback of Queso Diablo. Available now and for an infinite time. Only at Qdoba Mexican Grill. Case with a 42 to 17 lead over Chicago. We go to the fourth quarter. It's going to be fourth down and six to go from the 25 yard line for the Maroons. And they are down by a wide margin. You wonder if they go for it here. Let's see who they send out. Well, do recall that they did go for it on fourth and short in enemy territory once before, so I think that the Spartans coaching staff definitely going to take that into consideration. And you're right, Andrew. I mean, with a 25-point deficit, I mean, what do you have to lose at this point if you are the Chicago Maroons? Offense on the field for Chicago, opening day, and Case all over Chicago. Ball spotted on the 25-yard line. Of the Spartans, Moser going to go for it. Three tight to the left, one to the right. Carroll in the backfield. Moser drops back, looks to the left. It's broken up. Another turnover on downs. Breaking it up was the senior, Nick Kwan. 
tell you what, Cody Calhoun not making a lot of friends, and neither is Nick Kwan. He's been breaking up passes his entire duration as a Spartan, getting a hand in there. That was just enough to knock it away and force another turnover. The only two turnovers of the game have been on downs on Chicago's end. Just under 15 left to play, four seconds in to the fourth quarter. And Case leading Chicago 42 to 17. Ball spotted on the 25 yard line after the breakup. Kuda back to work. Two in the backfield. Motions the fullback to his left. Now he will hand it off. Off tackle right. Bounced out, and it'll be a gain of about seven out to the 33 yard line. The rush by Jeffrey Brown Jr. Yeah, Jeffrey Brown Jr. is a big part of that stable of, of healthy backs that the Spartans elect to go to. He's one of many guys who can really make things happen with a ball carrier. Kuda under center, two in the backfield, three wide. Kuda takes the snap, hands it off up the middle, and dumped quickly as Brown. It'll be third down and about two. Yeah, this is a third down that you really want to convert if you are Case Western Reserve because remember, the time of possession for Chicago in the third quarter was heavily in their favor. You want that offense to stick around a little bit longer. Four wide for Kuda. Third down and two from the 33. Kuda directing traffic, nine on the play clock. He's got Brown in his right pocket. Takes the snap, hand off Brown, off the right guard, pushes ahead near the first down, and it should be a first down and will. Out to the 35 yard line, first down pickup for Jeffrey Brown Jr. And just enough to give the Spartans another conversion, keep that defense rested so that they can regroup and try to adjust here for the dwindling minutes. Kuda takes the snap, three wide, two to the left, one to the right. Lone man to the right is Hunter Tullock. It'll be a pistol snap for Kuda. Brown to his left, Aguilar to his right. There's the snap, and the keeper by Kuda gets around to tackler. Not going to get much more. Out to the 39-yard line, bumped off of the tackle by Jacob Mooney. And Stephen McGugan, number 55, McGugan, was the first, right. the first guy to get there. And I'll tell you what, they, uh, they ran a quarter defense, so you got three down linemen. Everybody else is in the secondary, but they brought everybody up to line of scrimmage and blitz a lot mm -hmm. of their defensive backs. So it's a great play call by Chicago. So McGugan frustrated with himself that he missed that one. Now it's second and seven from the 39. Kuda dumps it off to the left at the 40. Justin Fan making the catch, gets out to the 44-yard line. It'll be third down and about two to go. Well, especially with that 85-yard return by Fan, you want to find opportunities and just a, a lot of different ways to get this guy to touch the football. The best way to do that probably in the passing game, but just not enough room to work with there. Too tight. Case on top, 42-17 against Chicago. 12 minutes left to go. In quarter number four, Kuda under center on third and two from the 44. Takes the snap, hand off, off tackle right, should be enough for the first down and will. Aguilar inside Chicago territory, tripped up at the 44. Tackle made by Brandon Cole, and a first down for the Spartans. Well, they love to use Aguilar's size and strength, but this time he uses his speed to get to the outside. He is a very well-rounded runner and a big play for Case Western Reserve, continuing the drive. They'll keep this tired defense on the field, an 11-yard gain for Aguilar. Four wide for Cuda. Aguilar, the lone man in the backfield, and a pistol snap. There's the snap from Kuda, looking right to Fan. Fan caught at the 42, now out to the 30 and dumped inside the 30. 
a two-man tackling job, Jackson Gary and Guy Stockwell, but it's another first down for the Spartans down at the 28-yard line. And I tell you what, Justin Fan is not a very big guy. He usually only takes one guy to bring him down if you can get to him, but Chicago uses two men to sandwich Fan right there. I think he might be feeling that tomorrow morning. A 15-yard reception by Fan, and the drive keeps going under 11 to play. 42-17 Spartans, and a flag before the snap. Usually that's on the offense. Most of the time it is, but you do want to wait for the official call, and I, I, I do agree. I do think it is going to be on the offense. Let's see. And it is on the offense. So it'll drop them back five. Send it to the 33. You know, Case has had a couple penalties in this game, but only two for Chicago. So you do have to tip your cap to them because Chicago has played a very disciplined football game here today. Kuda under center. Two wide to the left, two in the backfield. Here's the handoff up the middle to Anthony. Anthony, pretty good room up the middle to the 20. Inside the 15, tackled at the 12. Finally, Jeremy Vincent brings him down, but it's about a 20-yard gain by the running back. Yeah, Miles Anthony bursting into the secondary. We haven't quite been able to get him to the second level thus far, but on that last play, he certainly had no difficulty bursting into the secondary and getting a first down, moving all the way to the 12. Adam Zipko checks in. 42-17 Spartans under five to play in the ball game. Inside the red zone at the 12. Kuda takes the snap, hands off Anthony, spins away from a tackler and gets about three out to the nine. Second down. And seven to go after the three yard pickup. As soon as he hit that line of scrimmage, nice job to spin away from the first tackler and plunge ahead for a couple. Second and seven. Kuda takes the snap, hand off Anthony, up the middle, right through center, gets about two more. Third down, they'll spot it at the six, so a gain of three. Third and four to go. Spotted at the seven, third and five to go. We've really seen a heavy dosage of Anthony and company from the running back position. I think that they wanted to go to Cuda in the running game early and then switch things up a little bit. Have not seen much from Cuda running the ball lately. I'd watch out for him on this play. 8.40 left to go in regulation and timeout called. It's the second one used by the Spartans this half and up 42-17. No big deal burning another timeout inside the red zone trying to get another score up big. We'll be back after this. Everyone loves a comeback, right? Especially when that comeback is Queso Diablo from Qdoba, full of spicy satisfaction to take you straight to Queso Bliss. That fiery, smoky sensation you've been craving has returned. Celebrate the comeback of Queso Diablo. Available now and for an infinite time. Only at Qdoba Mexican Grill. Spartans 42, Chicago 17. 8.36 left to go in regulation. Spartans looking for another score. Third and five to go from the seven yard line. Cuda. With an empty backfield and a five wide out set. He's going to take a shotgun snap here, trying to go for the first down, if not the end zone. Kuda takes the snap, looking left, gets a lot of pressure. He's wrapped up and goes down. Fourth down, the sack into the hands of Michael McGinley. Fourth down, it'll drop him back to the... 18-yard line. That almost looked like Kuda was going to be able to, to pull a Houdini right there and, and escape the pressure. 
on that last play, but I, that's not a bad play when you think about it, to take the sack because you're still in field goal range. You avoid a potential uh, catastrophe with a turnover, so give your field goal unit a chance to boot it out. 35-yard attempt here for Carniel. Snap and the hold, kick is up, and it is through. 45-17, Case in the lead. A 35-yard field goal. The Spartans get one from Ben Carniol. Last year, his longest was 36. Now he puts one through the uprights from 35 on opening day. Under eight to play in regulation, 45-17 Spartans. Inspired by the 60s, Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. Visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. Another score for the Spartans. A field goal by Ben Corneal. His 35-yard kick makes it a 45-17 Spartans lead. 7.45 left to play in regulation. Jackson Colder up the kick, end over end, into the waiting arms of Jeremy Vincent, who fields at the three. Vincent, a lot of room out to the 25. They give him the 25 for free, and he gets out to about the 32-yard line. For being tackled, in on the tackle for the Spartans, Andrew Benathy. So it's a, about a 30-yard return. Chicago will take over at their own 33-yard line. 7.38 left to play in regulation. Kay's pretty clearly going to take opening day, and they were picked by many. In the top 25 votes, 18 votes received in the top 25 of the nation by the Spartans this year. Dump off left by Moser, close to the first down at about the 40. Ball ripped out of the mitts of the receiver after the play. Catch was made by Andrew Falk, but he'll get the reception at the 40-yard line. Just too difficult to tell if that was a clear fumble or not just too many blue uniforms in the way six or seven of them there Moser dumps it out to the right catch made in the flat out for a first down to the Chicago 45 yard line the reception by Dante Nepa so first down now spotted at the 46 and now the Maroons are rolling kind of time now for the Maroons to just get their work in not much of a hope of coming back in this ball game but get your reps in and finish the game strong for Chris Wilkerson's squad. Seven minutes left to go. 45-17 Spartans. The handoff up the middle to Ringer. Ringer gets about three before his forward progress is stopped at the 48-yard line. Running back Matthew Ringer, Jr. out of Modesto, California. will spot the ball at the 49 for a three-yard gain. Sets up second down and seven to go. First down marker is at the case 44. Four wide set, three tight to the right. Moser fakes the pass right, now goes deep right sideline off of the mitts of the intended receiver. Chris Caramanos down the right sideline. Not quite broken up, just out of his reach. That looked like a little bit of miscommunication on the coverage there. A couple Spartan defensive backs a little bit slow to get up. You see the ball go off of the fingertips of the intended target, but everybody is up and in good spirits. Andre Orantis run into there by the safety, almost went knee to knee, and that's really dangerous. Safety came over top a little late and tried to knock the ball out of the way. Turned out that it didn't matter, ball out of Caramanos' reach anyway, but still, that would have been really dangerous injury-wise. The incomplete pass, everybody's okay. Third down and seven to go. The snap to Moser. Moser looking left, deep down the sideline, over the head of the intended target, Caramanos, and also over the head of Quan, who was looking for an interception. Fourth down. 
Well, and you can still really appreciate the fact that Burke Moser has taken some shots deep down the field. I mean, even with the score the way it is, you still want to test the defense, see what you can get, see what kind of plays you can make, and, and get ready for the following game. But Moser's going to need some ice on that shoulder at the end of the game as he's approaching upwards of 50 throws. So the punt into the arms of Fan. Fan quickly wrapped up at about the 11-yard line. No gain. And in on the tackle for Chicago, Jackson Gary. He's been all over the field today. So from the 49 out to the Case 15 on that punt. So Case takes over with 6.19 left to go. There's a really good look at Greg Debelex group right there and his team last season had won seven games in a row for a total of seven and three but I, I think the Spartans have their hopes much higher than seven and three at this point in the season I mean they've got the quarterback to do it they've got the defense to do it only question is or the biggest question is are they going to be healthy enough going down the stretch and it looks like that will fall into place also so a new set of downs for the Spartans They'll go with a handoff, off tackle right. Brown gets the handoff, going down the right sideline. Brown finally pushed out of bounds after a long gain at the 32. A first down for Brown on the tackle, it was Hayden Harrow. We got a new QB under center for the Spartans. No more Rob Kuda, Julian Kennard takes over. Brown with the gain there from the 15 out to the 34 yard line. Gain a 19 on the play on the first down run. Kennard under center, takes the snap and hands off to Brown. Off tackle left. Not going to get much room. He's wrapped up for a loss of one on the play. I'll tell you what, how do you like this? If you would have told me that the Spartans would score 45 points and Rob Kuda would only have 19 pass attempts, <laughs> boy, just trying to put that into perspective right there. I mean, what a great day for the Spartans' offense and and the kicker is that, uh, you know, the extra added bonus is that you get other players get, get some good playing time in there and they get a chance to improve upon their skills. Kennard, the freshman taking over from Damascus, Maryland. Second and 14 from Case's own 30 yard line. Four wide, one in the backfield. Kennard drops back, now he'll run, doing his best Cuda impersonation. He's out back to the original line of scrimmage and then some. It's about a five-yard gain that gets him to the 36-yard line. And that's the thing, Andrew. I mean, the, all of these backup quarterbacks and these younger quarterbacks for Case Western Reserve, they watch Rob Kuda in practice every day. So they're going to tear a page out of his book and try to use that to their advantage. Third and eight from Case's own 36. Under four and three quarters left to play. 45-17 Spartans. A handoff, a little bit flubbed to Brown, and Brown's going to lose a bunch of yards there. Loss of about five back to the 31 will set up fourth down. And that all started with the handoff that didn't go so smoothly. Now, not a great transition between quarterback and tailback right there, but that's going to come with time. I mean, the younger players, uh, just a matter of repetition, getting that down and getting that to the point where they can't get it wrong, getting enough reps, and, and these reps here are important for them. Chris Damon Brower on the tackle. So it'll set up a punt. Jacob Burke back to punt. Back to receive it, Jeremy Vincent. Punting from his own 15 yard line, end over end punt. Out to the 30, fumbled by Vincent, picks it back up, wrapped up at the 29, so he loses one. Orantis on the tackle. Good punt there by Jacob Burke and great coverage by Orantis. Chicago will start with the ball on their own 29-yard line. They've been really impressed with the way that Andre Orantis has responded here today. He's had a lot of adversity with the um, Chicago offense going right at him, but he has responded in a big way and been a big part of this winning formula for the Spartans. So it will be a new quarterback also for Chicago. They'll hand the ball off up the middle and get maybe one. New quarterback for Chicago, Brian Collis. 
Very short gain there. The running back for Chicago now is Austin Maltbia. Maltbia, sophomore. Collis, the freshman from Niles, Illinois. Second and seven after the three yard gain out to the 32. Case with a 45-17 lead, three to play in regulation. Collis drops back, looks to the right. It's in and out of the hands of the, the intended target. More reserves getting into the ball game. Trevor Anderson, who's a quarterback, going out to play wide receiver. He's out to the right. The sophomore drops the football a little bit high on the pass from Collis. You know, and I think that the senior, Burke Moser, pretty much, for the most part, had a really good game. I mean, over 30 completions, 220 yards, and a touchdown, no interceptions, only one sack. I mean, he's on the, the sideline right now, but that's a pretty quality performance by the quarterback. He's just on the wrong end of the eight ball. Only a couple three and outs today. There's a dump off to Sid Reynolds. The number one wideout gets it to the 35. That was on third down, so it'll bring up fourth from the 36. Four-yard pickup on the play. And a quick three and out there by the sophomore Collis. Set up another punt, so they're kind of changing hands back and forth at the end of this ball game. Both teams running out the clock. Three straight punts. Back from his own 21 to punt it is Kurzidlowski. Two back to receive, McKelvey and Fan. There's a low punt. And they'll let it go. Going to be downed at the 11-yard line. That was Kevin Chrysis, not McKelvey, back on the punt. They'll down it inside the 10-yard line at the 9. So from the UC 21, a good punt gets it inside the 10-yard line of the Spartans. They'll start over 2-10 left to play in regulation. And Andrew, I can only imagine that going back to a year ago, what a win at Chicago in week one would have done for Case Western Reserve. I mean, after that game, that's where their seven game winning streak began. And they lost to Chicago and really a nail biter towards the end. I mean, you can only just wonder, but good to see the Spartans getting the win here today and reversing their fortunes from a season ago. Kennard back under center. And they'll hand it off. It won't be Kennard, I beg your pardon. They're going to go with Steven Gunther. So Gunther will take the snaps, hands it off there to the right. They get a short gain. Second down with under two left to play. Second and seven from the 12. Last year, Chicago came back from a 14-point deficit. Sid Reynolds caught a 46-yard touchdown pass from Burke Moser late in the ballgame for a go-ahead touchdown to get Chicago the win. Heartbreaker and Case getting revenge. There's the handoff up the middle. Short gain for Brown. Might be even back to the line of scrimmage. Didn't get much on the play. It'll be third down. Coming up next week, Chicago, uh, Spartans on the road at Grove City starting pack play. 7 o'clock kickoff at Grove City. They'll be on the road two weeks in a row next Saturday and the Saturday following. Finally back on October 1st, a 6 p.m. kickoff against St. Vincent for the Spartans. Back here at DeSanto Field, Eddie and I will have the call on that one. Can't wait to be back. Also going to have fireworks for that one if I'm not mistaken. And you are not mistaken. Snap to Gunther over his head, and Gunther is going to fall on it. That'll be fourth down. Falls on it inside the five-yard line. It'll be fourth down. Going to be so important for the Spartans to keep Rob Kuda fresh, keep him rested. I know that he is such a workhorse and that, you know, uh, if, it, if the decision was up to him, that he probably would stay in the game if he had the ability to, but I think that Coach Debelek would, would prefer to keep him out of harm's way despite the fact that he is so durable. Um, but yeah, I mean, Rob Kuda is going to be everything for the Spartans here this year and got to give a lot of credit to the offensive line too. I mean, they really did a solid job of keeping him out of harm's way and, and protecting him in the pocket and opening up holes for him to run. Case is going to take the time out here with nine seconds left to play. Gives us an opportunity to remind you that Case, with a 45-17 lead, not only do they get revenge on Chicago, they open the season 1-0. and And for Chicago, it's the first time in seven years. They had seven straight opening day victories. 
and they take the loss today at the Spartans. A great day for the Spartan offense. Rob Kuda running things for most of the way, as you mentioned, Eddie. And they're going to run their way to a 45-17 victory over Chicago this afternoon at DeSanto Field. Jacob Burke going to punt it away to Jeremy Vincent. They might get one more play after this. Burke from the back of his own end zone. High punt just to get it away from the oncoming rushers. Jeremy Vincent going to let it roll. One second and zeros on the clock. Case Western Reserve University opens up the season 1-0 with a 45-17 victory over Chicago.